Hi. I'd like to go over what we talked about in class today, and um, this relates back to what we've been talking about going uh, all the way back to Wednesday of last week, and that is the idea of fractions as division and division as fractions, and in particular, understanding uh, that when we divide a whole number by a whole number, we can express the quotient or the answer as a fraction. So one of the questions I asked as students came in today at the very beginning of class was this. 1 divided by 7 equals what? And the two most common answers that I got was 7 or 1 seventh. And uh, after some investigating and uh, having students explain their thinking, what we found out was students were thinking, well, 1 divided by 7 is the same as 7 divided by 1, so that must be 7. And they were incorrectly applying the commutative property to division. And unfortunately, the commutative property is only valid when we talk about addition or multiplication. So what am I talking about? So commutative property basically states that, hey, if, if 3 plus 2 equals 5, uh, then 2 plus 3 also equals 5. So um, I, I can switch these add-ins around and get the same sum. Um, with multiplication, it works the same way. If I have the factors 3 and 2, I get the product of 6. Uh, but if I flip-flop the order of those factors and say put 2 in front and multiply it with 3, I still get 6. So the commutative property, unfortunately, does not work with division. We cannot say 1 divided by 7 is equivalent to 7 divided by 1. So there's two different things going on here. So what's going on here is we have one whole, and we're dividing it into seven equal parts. And we want to know, well, how big is one of those parts? Well, we used uh, two pieces of information or two strategies to help us figure that out today. So uh, one way to make sense out of 1 divided by 7 is to write a scenario. So attaching a situation to this division problem uh, to make sense of it. And then another strategy that we talked about is drawing a diagram. And uh, together with the scenario writing and uh, drawing of a diagram, we were able to figure out uh, pretty conclusively that 1 divided by 7 uh, does equal 1 seventh. So uh, let me, let me kind of show you what I mean here. So let's talk about uh, a scenario that would match 1 divided by 7. So the 1 is the number or the object or the quantity or whatever that's being divided. And uh, since food works really, really well in division, we'll, we'll say 1 is um, the number of waffles we have. And we'll say 7 could be the number of people sharing the waffles equally. So once we've assigned what 1 and 7 refer to, then it's really easy to write a scenario. So that scenario could be simply one waffle 
is equally shared by seven people. And even though that scenario is pretty unrealistic, considering I've never shared my waffle with seven people. In fact, I don't think I've ever shared my waffle. But uh, attaching some type of context to the expression one divided by seven does uh, kind of help remind us what is being divided here. Is the one being divided into seven equal parts? Is the seven being divided into one part? Writing the scenario helps to clarify that. Now, the other um, strategy that we use again is drawing a diagram to match the situation. So if one waffle is being shared by seven people, um, I can use this rectangle here to represent one whole waffle. Uh, again, it would probably make more sense if this model or diagram was a circle, but I find dividing a circle into seven equal parts uh, much harder than dividing a rectangle into seven equal parts. So since this is one divided by seven, I'm gonna divide this one whole here by, or into seven equal parts. And you'll have to forgive me here. These parts are not gonna look very equal. Ooh, yeah, terrible job on my part, I apologize. So um, we've just divided uh, one whole into seven equal sections. Again, please use your imagination and assume that my drawing was uh, perfect and that each of these sections is in fact equal. So um, if we were to share one waffle with seven people equally, each person would get one equally sized piece out of the whole waffle. Uh, and so that since it's one piece out of a total of seven pieces, then one divided by seven means each person would receive one seventh of the waffle. So understanding that one seventh equals one, or I'm sorry, one divided by seventh equals one seventh, and then recognizing one seventh is the same as dividing one by seven is one of the key concepts that students need to grasp uh, during the second unit, okay, when we're considering fractions as division. So to help make these connections, students uh, used this table here and they filled in missing parts. So they were either given a scenario, a division expression, or a fraction quotient, and then were asked to fill in uh, the missing information given what they know. So for example, in the first top row here, uh, we're given a scenario which states one sub sandwich is shared equally by four people. Now what students need to do from there is to determine a division expression that matches the scenario and then determine what the fraction quotient of the division expression would be. Uh, in other words, how much sandwich would each person get? Okay, so division expression. First and foremost, we need to know what is being divided. That's going to be our dividend or the first number we write down. So we can either divide one sub sandwich or we can divide four people. When we think about it that way, it becomes very obvious that we are dividing one sub sandwich. So the number one becomes our dividend and that is what we are dividing. The four people represents how many equal groups we are going to be placing this one whole sandwich into. So the complete division expression would be one divided by four. The fraction quotient then, or how much of a sandwich each person would receive, would be one fourth. So each person would share or um, would receive one fourth of the sub sandwich. Okay, so question two, or it's really not labeled, but row two here, 
Uh, we are missing a scenario. We're provided a, a division expression. We are not provided a fraction quotient. So looking at the division expression 2 divided by 3, I need to come up with a scenario that matches this expression. So going along with the theme of food, I know that I'm dividing the number 2. I need to choose something that's dividable and food is always dividable. So I'm going to say for my scenario two pizzas are shared equally by three people. The fraction quotient then is going to tell me what fraction of a pizza will each person get in this situation um, or you can think of it as how much pizza would each person receive so 2 divided by 3 means that each person would receive two-thirds of a pizza now the scenario helps us understand the division expression and vice versa and eventually uh, students should be able to quickly identify that 2 divided by 3 would be the same as 2 thirds and vice versa. But I ask students to use a picture to prove it. Uh, so in other words, writing or drawing a diagram to model this situation really helps students see that 2 thirds is in fact the amount of person each person would receive if two pizzas were being shared equally. So I'm going to, on the back of this paper here, uh, draw a model that represents that situation. So again, the situation is two pizzas are shared equally by three people. Uh, and since circles are a bit easier to divide into uh, three equal sections and we're talking about pizzas, I'll go ahead and draw my pizzas as circles here. Um, and again, you'll have to bear with me, use some imagination, and uh, pretend both of these pizzas are identical in size. So I have two whole pizzas, so two pizzas. And I'm going to share them with three people. So I'm going to divide each of these two pizzas into three equal sections. And then I like color. I like to use color in math. And I'm going to use color to represent the three different people. So let's pretend that this pinkish color is representing Bill's share of the pizza. This light bluish green represents Phil's share of the pizza. And the red represents Jill's share of the pizza. Okay, so if I'm Bill, I'm going to receive one of these pieces here from the first pizza, and then I'll receive another of these pieces from the second pizza. So what size are those pizza pieces out of the pizza? Well, this is one piece out of three equal pieces. So each of these pieces is equal to one third of the pizza. And Bill gets one one third slice, another one one third slice, one third plus one third means that Bill will receive two thirds of a pizza. And uh, so same for Phil. If he would receive a third from one of the pizzas and a third of another pizza, that'd be a total of 
two thirds of a pizza. And lastly, Joe would eat a third from this first pizza and a third from the second pizza to eat a total of two thirds of a pizza. So when we use a situation, in this case two pizzas being shared equally by three people, and then especially once we combine that scenario with a diagram or a picture, it really helps us to see that two divided by three is equal to two thirds, and vice versa, two thirds is equal to two divided by three. So students worked on filling out this entire table by themselves for anywhere between five and 10 minutes today in class. And then students spent about an additional five minutes uh, sharing their work with a partner. And then we went over this together as a class. Uh, before students left, I had them complete this brief activity and uh, this gave me an idea of um, which kids are, are starting to make the connection between uh, division, a situation, and fractions, um, which students need some extra help, and, and kind of just where we are as, as a grade on this idea that fractions are division. So students were presented with a situation. Five children share four cups of milk, so each child gets the same amount of milk. How many cups of milk will each child get? By far, the most popular answer, if students missed this question, was they told me that each child would receive five-fourths cups of milk. And many students realized after the fact that they did not read the situation very carefully and said they saw five come before the four and assumed that meant the equation matching the situation is five divided by four, but that is not the case. Uh, the equation would be four divided by five. And the reason for that is the four represents the cups of milk. If we divided five by four, that would be interpreted as dividing four children by four cups of milk. Well, I'm sorry, five children by four cups of milk. And that just doesn't make much sense. However, dividing four cups of milk uh, amongst five children equally does make sense. Okay, so now I'm going to pair the situation and the division expression with a diagram and hopefully uh, all this information will help us determine the answer to the question how many cups of milk will each child get. So I'm going to draw a one whole rectangle for each cup of milk I have. So I have four rectangles to represent four whole cups of milk. Now because each cup is being shared by five children, I need to divide each cup into five equal sections. So this situation represents four holes divided by five, but we want to know how many cups of milk each child would receive. So if we imagine one of the children is Bill, Bill would receive the shaded section of each cup of milk. So Bill would receive four sections, each of the same size. 
Now, to determine how many cups of milk that would represent, we need to understand how much does one of these sections represent. So since this is one section out of five, each section represents one-fifth cup of milk. So altogether, Mr. Bill would be receiving a fifth cup of milk from each cup of milk. So altogether, that would equal four-fifths cup of milk. So 4 divided by 5 would give us 4 fifths, which is the number of cups or how many cups of milk each child would get. And this picture here, or diagram, breaks down why 4 divided by 5 is in fact 4 fifths. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 holes. Each hole divided into fifths. All together, there are 4 fifths. So. Um, that was the exit ticket, if you will, that students took at the end of class today. Um, so, this idea of fractions as division is the uh, main concept that, uh, that this second unit is all about. We're connecting scenarios, division expressions, and fraction quotients together. And we want to be using scenarios and diagrams to help us understand why 2 divided by 3 is equal to 2 thirds and why 2 thirds is equal to 2 divided by 3. So I hope this video helps. Please uh, let me know if you have any questions.